Hey guys, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have my personal Sony 4K Ultra High Definition Blu-ray player. Um, I bought this a little over a year ago. Uh, it is uh, UHB, I think, uh, UB, uh, UBP X800. This is the Mark II model. <clears throat> And uh, it's uh, got a little problem, and uh, I've read about this problem on the internet, and uh, it freezes during playback. The issue is that it wasn't freezing before I did the firmware update. It was working fine, and now I've got a little bit of a freezing problem, and I have to be honest, it is really pissing me off. Um, I was a very early adopter of the uh, HD DVD high definition discs. I went that direction first, which was probably the wrong decision. Um, less than a year later, I, I, I bought my PS3, so I got into Blu-ray as well. I've never had an issue with standard Blu-ray or any of my Blu-ray players. I've never had a disc freeze up. Um, it's been very reliable. <clears throat> HD DVD is another story that those players were very finicky. Um, I still have quite a few HD DVD discs. Um, I don't know why I keep them, but uh, I do have them. Just don't want to spend the money to uh, get the movies on Blu-ray. And let's be honest, how many video discs are you popping in on a day-to-day -day basis anymore? Everybody's streaming these days. It's a lot easier. Um, but there are some movies that I, I love to keep on disc. And um, I was really excited that the uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture <clears throat> was recently released in the uh, director's cut. Um, complete restoration from the top to bottom. It was... Uh, just a beautiful looking film whether you like the movie or not that's another story but uh i was really excited to get that i pre-ordered it and and i picked up wrath of Khan on 4k too um and uh yeah about uh, 45 minutes in the movie uh this thing froze and it's the first time it's done it <clears throat> like i said i've had about a year and i've never updated the firmware until a month or so ago um now i don't know if i can't say for sure it's the firmware but uh it is a little bit suspicious that it started doing that afterwards. So, um, yeah, there's lots of forums out there talking about this player and the freezing issues. Um, I probably should have bought the Panasonic model looking back, but, uh, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. And uh, so what we're going to do here today is I just want to open it up. <clears throat> I have previously opened it up just to have a peek around. Couldn't see any loose cables or anything like that. Um, it is a completely sealed box. There's no fan at all. Um, the main chip on the board does have a really huge heat sink, but you kind of wonder, right? Where, where's that heat going to escape to? It can't go anywhere on this unit unless it just, you know, gets out, uh, you know, in whatever cracks are in the, uh, in the case here. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I kind of wonder about heat uh, as one of the reasons. Um, so what I'm going to do here today, I, I'm not going to do anything like cut open the case and put a fan in, nothing like that. Um, it's not under warranty anymore, so I can really do whatever I want, but I'm not going to do that. I just, I don't want to start messing around with that stuff. I have another 4K player. The only reason I bought this one was uh, it's Dolby Vision compatible, whereas my older one is just a HDR10. Um, is there a lot of difference between the two? Probably not. But uh, anyway, this one was Dolby Vision and it, it had, you know, it, it's a really high quality unit i thought you know what are the chances of me getting a unit that's going to freeze well here we are so what i'm going to do i'm going to open it up and i, I just want to look at the drive unit today i want to see if uh it needs any lube if something's getting stuck you know i i just don't know so maybe we can just do some maintenance on that plus uh it's a good idea to uh this thing's a pain in the ass to open up and a lot of people are going to probably break the case getting it open so document how you open up one of these units okay um sony's usually pretty good <clears throat> for putting uh little arrows as to what screws you're supposed to remove so there's a little arrow there so you take that one off and this one off but there's a couple here that are sneaky this one and i believe this one to get the top off so why don't we do that i'm going to sit down here and uh, we'll get it open uh, actually i want to put something down here so I don't scratch the hell out of this thing a towel and then uh We'll get it open and then see if we can get the drive unit out. Okay, let's uh, start opening this thing. Like I mentioned, two screws on the back here. Actually, there's four, but we, you got to get these ones out first, the far ones. 
Still on my second charge on my screwdriver, by the way. Can you see that? No. So we're doing this one. So what you do is you remove that screw and then you just pull back in the side panel like that and just remove it. <clears throat> Horrible design to open up. I don't understand why they need to do this. Engineers. <clears throat> so remove the screw, pull back, remove. All right, now you would think that the uh, top would come off, but it, that's not the case with this one. This is a plastic piece here, and uh, it's held in with these two screws. So the, the second one in here, I put a little arrow with a marker. So remember, so you gotta remove that one. And then this one. And now the whole lid, what you want to do is just kind of pull it back. Oh, whoa, no, wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Won't come back with it unless you remove these two. Actually, not this one, this one here. And uh, is there an arrow? There's not. So two more, sorry. I mean, I can't even remember how to get this bloody thing open sometimes. <clears throat> Now it should come back. Right, don't make me look like an ass. It's making me look like an ass. Or is it forward? Oh, it's forward. I'm sorry. Push forward. Okay, so forward. And it'll release clips on both sides. Like I said, total, total pain in the butt, man. Just such a stupid, look at this, all these clips here, stupid, stupid design. <clears throat> all right, now, so now you've kind of got what would be a normal case here, with, but without sides. So you got to remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve screws. So you know what we're going to do, oops, what we're going to do here, we're going to pause, I'll be right back. Okay, all the screws are out, so you're just going to grab this and remove it. It's just a standard lid. I mean, the deck is beautifully built. Yeah, it's got nice, uh, looks like, I don't know if that's for interference or what it is here. It's right over the power supply. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but beautifully built. I keep hitting, hitting you with my head here. And uh, there's the deck inside. <clears throat> nothing special you have a 4k drive here um, here's your main processing board massive heat sink here for the uh, probably the video processing chip or the audio processing chip and then a really simple power supply there's there's nothing to these things um, but obviously something's wrong with this uh, with this model because it's freezing so we're gonna remove the deck, and it looks like it's uh, one, two, three, four screws to remove it. Um, manufactured January 2021, so it's a pretty new unit. Um, and then once we get this uh, drive out of here, I guess we'll take these. Uh, well, there's two more screws here. We'll remove those screws. I bet you there's two under here. And we'll uh, see if we can open it up and get inside. Um, let me pull this drive out and I'll be right back. Okay, it was only four screws and they're at the bottom to, um, I think this is what uh, holds the top on. So let's, uh, what we want to do first is you just want to disconnect these uh, ribbon cables from the main board. Okay, so they're already folded. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be too, uh, don't put your man hands on there too much because these are really gentle, really delicate. So... There we go, there's our drive, all right. Nothing special about this. We got a little, little cheapo motor here. We're gonna see if we can, that's probably just to open the door. 
Um, that's working fine. Um, but we're going to see what we can service in there, if we can service anything at all. So we'll just put the, uh, the main guts of the unit in another spot here so we can work on that drive. And the one, the one problem with this new 4K, right, is that uh, if you remember back in the day when DVD came out in the uh, late 90s, everybody jumped on board and started making DVD players from just about every brand under the sun. And even with uh, Blu-ray and HD DVD, like uh, even though Sony and uh, Toshiba went head-to-head -head on that, you know, there were different manufacturers like Pioneer, Panasonic, uh, you know, they started making players. And then, you know, you got the Chinese companies that came in and started making players as well. But with 4K, there's almost no new uh, uh, units coming out. Um, that 800 uh, Mark II, that's from like 2019 or 2000, yeah, 2019. And it's still available, right? So no one's dumping any money into this format because it's probably not selling all that great. You're only going to get, you know, your hardcore uh video files who want to get into this um into another disc format and uh i seriously doubt you'll ever see an 8k disc i think this is the the end of uh removable um media for as far as discs concerned um for home theater and who knows what'll come out maybe they'll start shipping out movies on some kind of sd card right uh that's i could see that happening and then you know your player well you won't even have a player you'd plug it right into your television right so Anyway, let's um, let's get into this. I I have not. It looks like yeah, one one two three four. Right, I'm thinking this is gonna looks like a clip here or something. Let's do it together. Let me uh, let me zoom in just a little bit so we can do this. Let's see what's in here. <clears throat> I have never opened this up before, so I'm just gonna take my time. And uh, not damage anything. Another thing is, uh, you know, 4K movies. Oh, that's a really tiny screw. 4K movies come out on uh, some really big Blu-ray discs, like uh, VD100. They're like four-layer discs. And I'm just wondering, you know, is the technology just, you know, getting to the point where it's just getting harder and harder to read these discs with all these multi-layers? Your guess is as good as mine. Okay, we're gonna take those two out as well. So the model of this uh, of this drive unit is a UPX-1. <clears throat> There's no service manual available for this uh, for this Sony. Uh, does it look like it needs to slide back? It does, doesn't it? There we go. Yeah, there's a couple clips here. You can see that they're going underneath, so push those back. Let's see. <clears throat> Here we are. Not a lot here. This is very heavy. You got a plastic inner, metal outer, and then just kind of a standard, standard drive. There's a worm gear in here and that uh, undoubtedly moves your laser back and forth. There's your rail. It looks like it has, you know, your typical uh, kind of uh, white lithium grease there. Here's our main disc motor. 
feels fine. There's, you know, let's be honest, there's, there's nothing wrong with this unit. There's really nothing to see here. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get a drop of oil inside the main gear there. I'm just going to, I'm just going to put a drop of oil there right now. <clears throat> And just uh, let it sit. Can you kind of see that? That's where the motor is. Let's uh, let's put schlop there. And just let it go in. <clears throat> I know that's not the problem. That that would not have anything to do with the freezing. I'm gonna clean the lens. We can actually move the. Oh, well, yeah, you can. You can move the laser. I don't feel any drag. We're actually, we're actually spinning that worm gear when we do it. So that's uh, probably distributing that oil I just put in there. It feels totally smooth. Would love to get a drop of oil underneath this motor, but it's a direct drive motor, and I I, I don't want to take this part. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh it's disappointing. Okay, let's clean the lens. <clears throat> so, just a little Windex or glass cleaner. Just put it on the tip like that. And uh, just gently clean the lens. That's about it. Hmm. I'm disappointed. I, I, I guess, unlike a turntable, you, you can immediately see what's wrong. This is probably um, has something to do with either heat or failure of a chip or something, you know, completely out of the realm of, of repair other than replacing a board. So yeah anyway um i'm gonna put it back together and i'm gonna put it back in service and see what happens um it's disappointing it really is but you know i know i know this player is uh it's uh it's got quite a following out there for this particular reason and i guess you know just documenting how to open it up so people can have a look and just do some extremely basic maintenance on it um, it's not the worst thing in the world, and uh, I'm kind of glad I did it. But uh, what I'll do is I'll put it back into service. I've got a few more movies to watch, and uh, I'll let you know uh, what happens. Because uh, I know that uh, this fist uh, started banging on top of the, the case of that unit a few nights ago when it started freezing during one of my favorite movies. So, not happy. And I can't say if it does it with a standard Blu-ray. It's only been the 4K discs that it's been doing it with, so... Anyway, I will keep you updated. That's the uh, Sony, uh, whatever it is, UBP X, whatever, 800 Mark II with a freezing issue. If you've got that problem, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you could try doing what I did here, and uh, I'll update you if uh, anything exciting happens. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in again. I'll catch you in the next video. Oh, there's me banging my head again. <laughs>